to synthesis, many reactions take place, but the overall process can be summarized by a chemical equation which states that the combination of carbon dioxide, water and light energy produces glucose and oxygen. Photosynthesis consists of two stages, the light-dependent reactions, which take place in the thylakoids, and the light-independent reactions, known as the Calvin cycle, which takes place in the stroma. Let's take a closer look at each of these two stages, starting with the light reactions. The light reactions convert solar energy to chemical energy, and this is made possible by the two photosystems that are located in the thylakoid membrane of the chloroplast. The two photosystems are named in the order of their discovery. Photosystem 2 is the first light capturing complex, and photosystem 1 is the second light capturing complex. Each photosystem consists of a light harvesting complex, which is made up of a group of pigment molecules surrounding a reaction center complex. The reaction center complex consists of an electron acceptor next to a special pair of chlorophyll molecules. When light strikes one of the chlorophyll pigment molecules in the light harvesting complex, it excites an electron to a higher energy state. That electron then drops back to its initial state, which releases energy, exciting an electron in the next chlorophyll. Thus, the series of pigment molecules in the light harvesting complex creates a pathway to the reaction center complex. The pair of chlorophyll molecules found in the reaction center complex of photosystem 2 are known as P680 because these molecules are best at absorbing light at a wavelength of 680 nanometers. When the energy being relayed in the harvesting complex reaches the P680 pair of chlorophyll molecules, it excites an electron to a higher energy state. This electron is transferred to the primary electron acceptor, resulting in a positively charged P680, denoted as P680+. An enzyme catalyzes the splitting of water into two electrons, two hydrogen ions, and an oxygen atom. The electrons from this reaction are transferred to P680, returning P680 to its initial state. The oxygen atom combines with another oxygen atom to make oxygen air, and the hydrogen ions are released into the thylakoid lumen where they create a proton gradient that will be used to form ATP by the process of chemiosmosis. In photosystem 1, a process similar to that in photosystem 2 captures light energy and transfers it to a primary electron acceptor. The reaction center chlorophyll molecules in photosystem 1 are referred to as P700 because they most effectively absorb light having a wavelength of 700 nanometers. Light energy is transferred to the reaction center exciting an electron in the P700 pair of chlorophyll molecules, which gets passed on to the primary electron acceptor. P700 is now referred to as P700+, and it can accept electrons that come from photosystem 2. The excited electrons from the primary electron acceptor of photosystem 1 are then passed in a series of redox reactions to NADP+, which also takes hydrogen ions from the stroma to make NADPH. NADPH will be used later in the Calvin cycle. Earlier we learned that the water splitting reaction that takes place in photosystem 2 results in the pumping of protons to the thylakoid lumen. This then results in the production of ATP by chemiosmosis. Chemiosmosis is the movement of charged particles, protons in this case, across a semi-permeable membrane down the electrochemical gradient. This chemical potential is used by the enzyme ATP synthase found in the thylakoid membrane to generate ATP from ADP. Hydrogen ions diffuse down the concentration gradient and this is coupled by ATP synthase to the phosphorylation of ADP resulting in ATP synthesis. So to summarize, the light reactions use solar power to generate ATP and NADPH. 
We're now ready to look at the light independent reactions of photosynthesis, the Calvin cycle, which utilizes ATP and NADPH from the first stage to convert carbon dioxide to sugar. Calvin cycle takes place in the stroma, the fluid inside the chloroplast, and can be divided into three main steps. The first step is known as carbon fixation because it takes in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and fixes it into organic molecules. In this step, the enzyme known as Rubisco adds one carbon to a five carbon sugar called ribulose bisphosphate, or RUBP, during carbon fixation. This forms a six carbon sugar that is unstable and immediately splits into two three carbon molecules called 3-phosphoglycerate, or 3-PGA. In the second step, a series of reduction reactions utilizing ATP and NADPH from the light reaction results in glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, or G3P, a precursor to glucose. Importantly, for every three molecules of carbon dioxide that enter the cycle, six molecules of G3P are formed. Five of these G3P molecules will be recycled into RUBP in the next step. Only one molecule leaves the cycle, resulting in a net production of one G3P for every turn of the cycle. So it takes six turns to produce a single molecule of glucose. The final step is the regeneration of RUBP from the five molecules of G3P in the previous step. Remember that neither the light reactions or the Calvin cycle alone can make sugar from carbon dioxide. Both stages are required for photosynthesis.